Hello again, this is Al K0CN, and I've just downloaded Smart SDR version 2.0, so I thought I'd spend a couple of minutes reviewing the process for starting up the software and operating your Flex 6000 series radio. The screenshot you see here is my operating QTH on Mille Lacs Lake. You can see my tower here in the foreground. I'm covered up by a bunch of trees. But uh, maybe not the cleanest background to do this on, but we'll cover that up real soon here. I click on Smart SDR version 2.0.17, and a window appears, uh, a bit different from the previous one, Smart SDR. You'll note on the top here that KO or K0 is simply the prefix to my call sign, and it will be green when I finish configuring the software to my router system here in the shack. To proceed, I click on the Flex Radio, and below I'll see the Smart Link Setup button, which brings me to a window where I can do my setup tasks. But the Connect button is the same as before. When I click on it, the interface for Smart SDR appears. Now at first it appears to be identical to that of the previous Smart SDR version 1.x, but there are a couple of small differences. Up here in the upper right there's a little arrow, and if I press on that arrow it pops out the panel. I can move that window around, I can make it smaller and larger, I can uh, do everything I could do while it was docked. I remove the equalizer and so forth, but it is undocked from the main interface window. Also, the CWX window, if I bring that up, I can also undock this window, and by pressing the same little arrow, move it over here to the side. It, it pops out of the main pane that we would use here for our interface with the Flex Radio. But I, can, I have a second monitor here, and I can move it over there, drag and drop, and it stays put. So if I wish to replace these windows or put them back into their original positions, I hit that arrow button again, and they'll return to their original docked position. This time, when I undock it, it will remember where I had them set up. So here, if I switch places, dock them up again, uh, they go back onto the interface, but this time when I pop them out of the window, they go back and remember the, the latest position that I had them uh, set into, which is nice if you get a N1MM window and you have all sorts of windows positioned around on one or two monitors. It's nice to be able to pop those panes out if you select to do so and have them go to a predetermined location. Another new feature of Smart SDR version 2.0 is the ability to add a new pan adapter and waterfall. We do that as before, but now I have this pop-out button available to me, actually on both pan adapters and waterfalls, so I can remove those or pop them out of the interface window. And since I'm using two monitors, Smart SDR wants to place this popped-out pan adapter in the second monitor, but it's easily dragged back over if you wish, and you can still resize and reshape the pan adapter and waterfall to meet your specific needs. I can still switch the transmit slice from one pan adapter to the other, and make any other changes to the parameters in the flag that I could under previous versions of Smart SDR. If I wish to return the pan adapter to the main interface, I simply click the pop in button and the interface then receives that pan adapter and waterfall. If I wish to remove it altogether, I simply close it and now I'm back to my original starting spot. So that's probably the main difference uh, that's visible here on the interface. By looking at the release notes, there's a long laundry list of things that have been upgraded and fixed, and see what some of the more non-obvious uh, changes are. But that's it for now. That is my peek at the Smart SDR version 2.0 interface, and we'll bring you more information as time goes on. For now, it's 73 from Al, K0CN. Thanks for watching, and good luck and good DX.